this bridge is a bit of a breakthrough, both from the artistic standpoint and for technology. The West 7th Street Bridge in downtown Fort Worth is the first of its kind in the world. A design that has never been built before, that is this innovative, will present challenges. Engineers and construction workers built what is believed to be the largest concrete arches in the world, constructed off-site and transported to the bridge location, and they did it all in downtown Fort Worth. You know, we, we really had to be focused at all times. Slow down on your cable a little bit. 10-4. Doing things that bridge. people have never done before. You ready to rock and roll? Don't get it all the way there, brother. At every turn, challenges transformed into bold accomplishments. Some have described the bridge as a work of art. And at the same time, it's a very important transportation connection. It is such a popular connection that the Fort Worth community raised concerns when construction of any replacement bridge was proposed for 7th Street. One of the most important instructions that we received from Commissioner Bill Meadows was, you need to listen to the community. They started as a good project, but community's involvement and input made it a better project. Replacement of the original city bridge became an extraordinary project because of three community requests. The first request was for a fast transition between bridges to minimize the impact on this critical connection between downtown Fort Worth and the revitalized cultural district. The second request was for a design aesthetic that complemented the district's world-renowned architecture. And finally, the cost of the new bridge had to remain within the city's budget. City officials favored a unique bridge design submitted by the Texas Department of Transportation, TxDOT. Lead design engineer is Dean Van Landet. The design takes care of everything the Fort Worth community requested, speed, budget, and aesthetics. The arches and the use of concrete complement the architecture in the cultural district. Maintenance and construction of a concrete arch bridge at this site cost less than a similar one made of steel. Plus, deck panels and floor beams are constructed conventionally, off-site, away from the bridge, which is known as pre-casting. Pre-casting these bridge components on level ground is much easier than building forms above the river at the bridge site, and pre-casting greatly reduces road closure and construction time. The big engineering question was could the arches be pre-cast? Large concrete arches are almost always built at the bridge site requiring formwork and scaffolding, similar to these cast-in-place arches built in 2010. Without precast, construction of the West 7th Street Bridge would resemble this 1931 bridge construction. With typical concrete arch bridges, it takes months if not years to build the formwork. You cast the arch and then you've got to strip out all the formwork. We didn't have that luxury. We needed to get in and get out. We knew we needed something unique. So we used our knowledge of precasting girders to make a precast arch. But precasting and hauling these complex arches, which are about twice as long as and 10 times heavier than a typical bridge girder, has never been attempted. Add to that the structure's overall one-of-a-kind design, plus a fast-paced construction schedule, and it's evident there will be many challenges. This project is on such a fast track. A lot of planning and coordination was really key and then you know at the end of the day you just got to have a lot of guts. One gutsy thing is constructing 12 massive precast concrete arches 163 feet long, 23 feet high, weighing over 280 tons. Their span is two and a half times longer than any other known singular precast arch. Construction starts by building one of two custom-made casting beds. Interior form walls are bolted in place. Land for the casting yard was donated by Chesapeake Energy. When completed, the large arches will be transported about a half a mile to the bridge site. The arches are the primary support for the West 7th Street Bridge. The weight of a vehicle transfers from the floor beams to the arch tie. From the tie, the force travels through a network of 52 solid stainless steel bars, also known as hangers. These tensioned hangers distribute roadway forces efficiently and uniformly across the top of the arch. The arch rib transfers the forces down to the columns and into the ground. The beauty of these arches is more 
than skin deep. Precasting an arch required a lot of creative thinking and a lot of detailing. Inside the arches are hundreds of critical embedded components, including ones for attaching hangers, floor beams and lights, surrounded by steel rebar. There's a tremendous amount of things in a small space. Typically in a precast element, you don't have that kind of congestion. It's one of the most complicated elements we've ever designed. Precision is essential. All the detailing needs to be impeccable. The tolerances are real small. Everything needs to fit together. Six ducts for critical high strength steel tendons are pushed through the arch in a predetermined pattern and secured to the steel rebar. Engineering graduate students from the University of Texas okay. install vibrating wire gauges to measure strains in the arch. Embedded tubes will act like a radiator circulating cool water through the concrete, which naturally heats while it cures. Too high of a curing temperature could crack the arch. Just about ready for concrete placement. All that's needed now is a final cleaning and a coat of form oil before the exterior walls are bolted in place. While most people sleep, and the streets are nearly empty, the casting yard is a bustle of activity. Casting an arch starts overnight when there's less chance of a concrete truck getting delayed in traffic, and when the arch can begin to cure at a lower air temperature. The slender arch has many small interior spaces created by the numerous embedded components. A custom-made concrete formula easily flows into those small spaces and is troweled to a smooth finish. While the arch cures, the crew covers it to reduce evaporation. The concrete temperature is monitored. Okay, guys, incoming. After an arch cures and the casting form walls are removed, the crew installs the 52 stainless steel hangers. There we go. These are the world's first precast arches with a network of hangers. All right, that's good. Unique structural members require custom-made parts like the clevis, which threads onto the hangers. Much better. And connects to the arch rib. That's good. Twist it. There we go. Okay, that's good. Go right there. Right there. High strength steel strands are threaded through ducts to create six tendons which will later be mechanically pulled to compress the concrete arch. After three weeks of construction, the arch is nearly ready to be rotated 90 degrees. The crew's lift tower, with robotic strand jacks mounted to the top, will slowly lift and rotate the custom-designed frame cradling the huge arch. Six pickup points distribute the weight to prevent the arch from cracking. Once confident that the arch is secure, it's go time. You ready, Kate? I'm ready. The subcontractor superintendent, Luke Umfress, is at the helm. All right, y'all keep y'all's eyes open. Let's pick this thing up. All right, coming up on all four. Radio communication is the crew's lifeline. Did everything look good up there to y'all? Yeah. The arch's low center of gravity aids the rotation of the heavy structure. For winds, I'm at 100 millimeters. Rotation takes about four hours. The sight of the arches sparks everyone's curiosity. Coming down. We got more calls from people said, what on earth is going on over there? Stop, Drake. Then when they found out it was the bridge itself, they loved watching it. It is a community thing and people were really excited. They would look at the countdown clock that we had at the host stand. And People could actually see progress each day, and the regulars that we had coming through, they could see the progress. And it was neat to watch them building the arches across the street. It's just awesome. Yeah, don't start the strong back. Over 1,500 of the curious get a closer look through community presentations and casting yard tours. 600,000 pounds. At various stages of arch construction, tension is adjusted in the high strength steel tendons. The hydraulic jack ultimately stresses most of the tendons to a final force of almost a million pounds. This pulling force compresses the concrete, which strengthens the structure and offsets what otherwise would be harmful tension caused by the bridge's weight and vehicular loads. Oh, thought about it, Good. The path each tendon takes through the arch is critical to the arch's structural integrity. A sophisticated program assisted the engineers in determining the pattern, but still, getting there wasn't easy. Every time you move the tendon, like even an inch, 
it would throw forces in different locations. We went through many, many tendon patterns at about 300 different models, and we found one that worked. After the tendons are stressed to carry roadway forces, they are grouted to prevent corrosion and lock them in place. Up to about a third of the pressure. Often, several operations are underway at the same time. So we've gone up three quarters of an inch. For this arch, workers are tensioning the hangers. You got it tight? Good. A strong back set on the top of the arch prevents the arch rib from cracking while the bridge is under construction. 12 steel braces are fabricated in the casting yard. They'll help stabilize the arches after they're set on the new columns and until they support a roadway. In mid-February, after the last arch is rotated, the crew dismantles the large lift tower. Just nine months after constructing the first arch, all 12 are rotated and ready to be installed. Out at the bridge site, workers are drilling shafts for the columns. While traffic rolls by on 7th Street, columns are cast, some right alongside the old ones. The crew's next major challenge All right. arrives in spring, transporting 12 280-ton concrete arches through the city to the new bridge columns lining the old West 7th Street Bridge. To reach the destination, arches are loaded on self-propelled modular transporters. From the casting yard, the crew guides the precious cargo across a few vacant city blocks and through one daring 90-degree turn before reaching 7th Street. And so begins the half-mile journey up 7th Street. East of the river, the news media has a view of the 7th Street Bridge from the top of a parking garage. On the west side, from behind a building, the transporter rolls onto 7th Street. It's another milestone day. All right, Rob, you ready? During this brief road closure, the first two arches will be set on the new columns. All right, put them the stakes are high. If just one of the 12 arches is damaged, it could cost millions and delay the project by many months. The crew closely observes the transporter as it crosses the jumper bridge, placed in its path to protect underground utilities. On the approach of the 7th Street Bridge, dollies are lowered to distribute the heavy weight. The load capacity of the bridge was analyzed and support was added to prevent the bridge from collapsing. Still, inspectors are cautious. The east side is nearly 100 years old. Each arch is transported and set on columns in about three hours. Skilled lift operators balance the 280-ton arch between two super cranes. The target for each end of the arch is a two and a half foot square steel plate on top of each column. The crew must center the arch within one half inch. The connection will be grouted to ensure string and 100% surface contact, but until then, hydraulic jacks support the arch less than two inches above the connection. The overhead braces fabricated in the casting yard are set across the top of the arches. To minimize impact to traffic, the crew transports most remaining arches in the evening. At night, it's just a little bit slower process just to make sure everything is in the right spot. You double check every connection. Three, no back. Ten four. Tonight, the two cranes are on the opposite sides of the river. The crew listens for reports about an invisible, unpredictable force, and that's the wind. He says about the wind gusts up 28 miles an hour. From the bridge deck, Luke and his father are the eyes and ears of the crane operators. What are you looking like down there? Tag straight flow. 
Tag straight slope. When the crane's weight tray floats, the huge crane can rotate. And we're gonna need to boom down and hold the load real easy. 10 ton counterweights and the crane operators maintain the balance necessary for lowering the crane's arm to reach the set point. So to get there, we have to boom down and hold our load and keep the crane in free swing and add ballast counterweight as we go. The crane in free swing is being pulled by the other one, like a car in tow, except between the two cranes is a huge arch. Get it almost down there where it needs to be. Okay. Yeah, get me one off. Take it off easy so it won't rock up there too. All right, do what you gotta do then. Dad, go ahead, do what you gotta do. All right, Scott, you ready to rock and roll? I'm gonna get it all the way there, brother. All right. You perfect speed right there, brother. Crane maneuvers now include hold fractions of an inch. About an inch and a quarter over, an inch over. All right, hold that. The contractor's project superintendent guides the steady moving arch onto the two and one half square foot plate. Down. On top of the column. Down. About an inch and a half. Right. Scott, let's give him 20 off of it right down here. The seventh arch and its temporary supports are set in an evening's work. After you're done working long hours and look at the pictures, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, that's the best way to describe it. It's awesome. The next morning before rush hour, the Old West 7th Street Bridge reopens. About a week later and a month after transporting the first arch, the old bridge carries its last vehicle and closes until the new bridge is built. The two remaining arches are transported. We had a, a major artery into downtown closed that we knew it was important to get that back open to the city of Fort Worth as soon as possible and it was just a lot of pressure. Built into the contract is an incentive for opening the new bridge to motor vehicle traffic in less than 150 days. $30,000 a day up to a maximum of 30 days. If we went beyond the 150 days, we were gonna get charged a penalty. And the, and the challenge is to maintain a certain amount of quality and keep a schedule going and, and keep your production up, doing things that people have never done before. The last overhead brace is set and demolition of the old bridge is underway. Industrial diamonds on a circular saw blade slice through the concrete. The first span removed is right over the clear fork of the Trinity River. The track hoe operator lifts these pieces out so they don't fall into the river. The last section demolished was the original 500 foot 1913 city bridge. Following a massive flood in 1949, the bridge was extended as part of a flood protection plan. In 2007, city leaders decided to replace the bridge after receiving reports of severe deterioration and of the bridge's inability to support wider, safer sidewalks. Although it had to be replaced, a discussion with the community led TxDOT to develop something more for historic bridges. We needed to learn from the experience with the 7th Street Bridge so that we could influence what the future will be for our other great bridges in the city. TxDOT developed a maintenance framework to assist in extending the life of historic Fort Worth and Tarrant County bridges. The framework is the first of its kind in Texas, and its development was spurred by the need to build a new West 7th Street Bridge. 220 miles south of Fort Worth and right on schedule with construction, the crew starts loading the custom-designed floor beams. The 102-80-ton beams were cast in San Marcos, Texas. High-strength steel strands inside these beams were tensioned to compress and strengthen the concrete. Still, the beams can crack if not handled properly. Cradles with 16-inch square platforms are the only safe place for the tension beams to make contact with the trailer. These supports prevent the beams from overturning. Without delay, the first convoy rolls north to Fort Worth on busy Interstate 35. Hours later, trucks line 7th Street on the west side of the river. The first beams hauled are unloaded alongside the bridge. They will be attached to the bottom of the arches directly over the river. Nice and easy, swing and right tag. Setting stress floor beams on the river span. Slow her down a little bit, swing and right. Is a huge challenge. 
Where you gotta get to is at the end of that strong bag. Beams are just over 86 feet long. And the clearance between the arches is only 58 feet. The crane operator must lift beams above the arches, rotate each on an angle, and then thread them down between and below the arches. Where is our incline meter at right now? What's it look like? You're about 20 degrees right now. Come on up. Everyone keeps an eye on the incline meter. Tilting the girder too much can compound gravitational forces on the already stressed beam, causing it to crack or even explode. We'll take what we need to clear things and have safety, and there's a decent breeze out here today. But if we don't have to push it to 37, let's not. The crew's focus, skills, and attention to detail pays off. Yeah, come on. All right, just do everything nice and easy. Very cool. Stop it, chef. Make that end pull around. All goes well for the flight of the beams over the river. Away from the river, floor beams are lifted in one operation plucked right off the truck and lifted straight up to the bottom of the arch tie. This connection between the floor beams and the arch tie is crucial to the bridge's structural integrity. The entire stability of the bridge depends on it. An epoxy and sand mixture is specially formulated and applied to create a hard custom shaped gasket. Rams drive the floor beams into position. The excess epoxy squeezes out. After the gasket hardens, the crew attaches a hydraulic jack to the steel bars running through the connection to tightly seal it. While the crew finishes setting floor beams on the east side, deck, line. deck panels are set on the west side. There are 1,300 panels. Just like the beams and arches, they are marked to identify their specific location on the bridge. It's a big jigsaw puzzle, and it just takes that kind of patience to be able to work through. Summer brings temperatures over 100 degrees. Construction workers develop a rhythm and a flow to their work as the rolling operation continues and the team works diligently to meet their rapidly approaching deadline. There was never really any time during this job to kind of decompress. We really had to be focused at all times. The roadway surface is cast. The remaining panels are set on the east side of the bridge. By late September, the opening of the new bridge is in sight. We were concerned with the amount of work that was left to do. It took almost hourly planning at that point to be sure that we hit all the milestones that we needed to hit to open the job as soon as possible. We're doing the pre-traffic work, finishing up. When it came down to that last two weeks, we hit the day. The new bridge is on track to open 26 days in advance of even the remarkably short 150-day deadline. What it ended up being was 124, so not bad. The typical bridge closure time of a project of that magnitude, I heard numbers of somewhere between two and three years. Compare that to less than five months, that is significant. And I think that's one of the coolest things about it is that it wasn't this massive long project. On October 9th, 2013, the new bridge opened. First, on the westbound side, with a procession of dignitaries Fort Worth honored for championing this project, which came in ahead of schedule and under the $26 million budget. Moments later, eastbound lanes were cleared of barricades. Streams and Valleys, a community partner, hosted a public event in November to celebrate the West 7th Street Bridge as the seventh wonder of Fort Worth. Y'all ready? Yep. Woo! Yay! You came out as a community and you told the city of Fort Worth and TxDOT that you wanted to replace this bridge but you had a few conditions. The unique design certainly accomplished those things. It enhances one of the best resources that the city of Fort Worth has, the river and the Trinity Trail system. 
it kind of just goes with the rolling of the trail down the Trinity, down through the park. During the event, the mayor presented a plaque to commemorate Fort Worth founding father, Major Van Zandt, who in the 1880s built the first bridge at the site to connect people and commerce. This bridge is an iconic bridge for Fort Worth and it stands as a great example of what we do best. That's collaborate and communicate. We don't just build physical structures, we build bridges between groups. The event marked the beginning of a new chapter for this historic river crossing and celebrated the outstanding accomplishments of people working together to create this innovative bridge. It's just a terrific feeling to see people interact with the bridge and have to create a place to be. It's a beautiful piece of uh, architecture and structure. It gives us uh, an east-west connection that's easy and safe. It says a lot about a city when architecture is innovative and engineering is innovative.